Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pirate Hope Show. My name is T. How in the world are you doing? I'm driving a car, so I thought it's a perfect time to make a video. I mean, what else would you do when you're driving down the road? Anyways, I'm boring you. This video cannot be three million hours long. Let me talk. Uh, so, if you uh, grew up in a Christian environment at all, you know, as a Christian, one thing that they're always bringing up is testimony. You gotta have a good testimony. You gotta know your testimony, and you gotta be ready to prepare it at a moment's notice. Um, and this is really frustrating when I was young and I was a Christian because I had the same testimony as statistically the majority of Christian Americans. And that is, uh, when I was a young child, I was indoctrinated. I was told by my parents and I was told by the church and everyone around me in my social sphere that the Bible is absolutely true, it's absolutely correct, and Christianity is absolutely true and correct. And if you don't believe in it, then God is going to burn you alive forever. And the same God is loving. That's, that seems like a contradiction, but whatever. Um, so I was indoctrinated as a child, and, and all the people that I knew and trust and believed in, and I thought I could believe every word that they said and not have to question it, were all telling me that this was completely, absolutely true, unquestionably true. Uh, if you were to question it, you would be stupid. And if you tried to question it out loud with like logic and, logic and reason, and you asked the wrong questions, things get real awkward really fast. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was my testimony, and that's not what you want. What, what you really want, what's an ideal Christian testimony, would be, uh, so, uh, let's, let me give you like a prime example of an ideal testimony. Um, when I was in ninth grade, I was the worst sinner of all time. I, I beat up old ladies, I took hobos, I threw them into the subway, like, you know, like on the subway where they get ran over by, by the train. Uh, I murdered puppies just for fun. Uh, I did all the really, really, really bad drugs and I was out of control. Uh, yeah, so, you know, but then I found Jesus. I found Jesus and I turned myself around. So I became a really, really good person. I, I started uh, feeding homeless people and I started uh, helping old ladies cross the road and I got perfect skin and I could slam dunk a basketball, right? That's the testimony you want to give. You want to give a testimony of conversion, like night and day, some kind of theoretical evidence that the Spirit of God Himself dwelt inside you and changed your heart and life forever. You were born again. Um, and of course I didn't have that. Most people don't. What you, most people really don't have is what I, a testimony I would love to hear and I very rarely ever hear is I became a Christian in my mid-twenties to early thirties. Uh, I really haven't given Christianity or any religion very much thought whatsoever. And one day I sat down and I said, I'm going to examine all of the evidence very carefully. I'm going to read the entire Bible before deciding to become a Christian. And I'm going to go to all the websites that claim that they have evidence of the, that there's contradictions in the Bible. And I'm going to see if these contradictions actually exist. I'm going to research each one individually. And then I'm going to look at the historical evidence and the logical evidence of Christianity. And then at, after I did all of these things, after I extremely carefully thought over the process. I said, damn, this book is so completely perfect. It is completely devoid of contradictions. It is not in any way logically or morally repugnant. Um, after doing all of that, then, uh, then I decided to become a Christian. That's a testimony that I've only ever heard of once, and that was some asshole that wrote a book called The Case for Christ, who claimed that because he had some background in being a lawyer, or his wife was a lawyer or something, he tried to look at Christianity from, from, a, from a legal perspective. Is there enough evidence for Christianity? And then he be, decided to become a Christian after actually examining the evidence. And there was like one guy, one guy that's ever fucking done that ever, right? Uh, and then he wrote a book about it, and he made lots of money. Uh, <laughs> You know, and then whenever you whenever you bring this up to, to Christians, like, hey, why did you become a Christian? Was it because you examined all the evidence? Did you look at it carefully? Did you did you look at it inside and out, or were you just indoctrinated as a child before you had any critical thinking skills whatsoever? Uh, you know, they say, well, no, I would I became a Christian when I was a, a young child, but uh, you know, look at uh, the case of Christ. You no, know, we don't need to examine it before we become a Christian. We have one book of one guy that claimed to do that, so we're golden. Read this book. Read this book. Well, I've heard all the arguments in that book. They're not very good. Um, so I figured, testimonies, I thought maybe I should give my testimony. 
why not? But my testimony is not going to be how I became a Christian, but how I became not a Christian. I started attending church uh, when I was about seven years old. Uh, I was indoctrinated by everyone around me. I went to church where all the grown-ups told me that Christianity is absolutely true. Um, not to be questioned. The Bible is absolutely true. Not to be questioned. I didn't have any critical thinking skills. I was seven. Uh, and all the grown-ups, the people you're supposed to be able to trust, were telling me that this was unquestionably true. So I believed it. And that's how I became a Christian. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's how I joined Christianity. But how did I leave Christianity? Well, early on in life... Um, early on in my Christian life, I should say, by the time I was probably um, 15 to 16, uh, really started, that's normally when people start thinking for themselves critically, at least hopefully a little bit. Um, and uh, I started noticing contradictions in the Bible, uh, major ones. Now, I'm not talking about contradictions like um, errors in genealogies. I'm not talking about contradictions like how do you spell someone's name or when did this king become a king? Did he become king when he was an old man or when he was a child? I'm not talking about stuff like that that you might consider not really that important. I mean, I think supposedly all Christians are supposed to think that's very important, but some people, they're like, whatever. These are just mediocre, non-important. Um, mediocre, non-important uh, supposed contradictions in the Bible. Uh, I've noticed things like, um, like, do Christians sin? Like, that's a pretty important question. Are Christians allowed to sin? Uh, now, one passage from Paul says that, um, of course you sin. You're, you're, you're breathing, aren't you? If you're, if whoever says he's without sin is a liar and the truth is not in him. Right? An actual passage that says, of course you're a sinner. And then Paul says, I am the chief of all sinners. Right? So it gives you some peace. It gives you some hope. It makes you um, not feel so bad about the fact that the Bible makes absolutely everything a sin, right? Every thought, not every thought, but the majority of thoughts are sins. Sexuality is sin, um, which is, might as well, it's like saying, like, uh, having a sex drive is a sin. It's like saying that, like, having to poop is a sin. Like, you're born, you're a human, you have a sex drive, right? Especially if you're a teenage boy. Um, so that, that passage gives you some, some closure. It gives you some hope. Uh, Paul says, of course you're a sinner if you're a human, and Christ came to die for sinners, uh, so you're golden, you're going to heaven. And then there'd be another passage that would say, um, he who continues to sin after he becomes a Christian uh, is, is, don't be deceived, he, who's, who, he who, who lives in sin is um, basically not a Christian. And there's many passages in the New Testament, uh, you know, in the Gospel age that says, uh, you know, basically, if you're a sinner, you're not really a Christian. I mean, just there's lots of them. Look them up. You know, I don't remember all of them right now. Um, but, um, you know, it's a contradiction. It's not a contradiction for little tiny things. It's a contradiction in the core mechanics of Christianity. Important shit, if you're going to actually try to be a Christian. Uh, and that's just one example. There's lots and lots of examples. And the more I study the Bible... Uh, at one point, I was try thinking about becoming a pastor. I actually preached a few sermons. And the more I would I studied the Bible and took it seriously, especially if you pull out a commentary uh, of books of the Bible, you find out that there's contradictions everywhere. But they have like a million, uh, like you have to do like super gymnastics, mental gymnastics to ignore them. Um, like the amount of mental flaming hoops you have to jump through is unbelievable. Uh, and, but you, you do it. You do it because if you don't do it, you're going to hell, right? If you have any doubt in your brain, that means that you obviously don't really have faith, right? You can't have doubts because that means doubt equals not having faith, and faith is how you become saved. So in order to have any doubts of the Bible is to not have faith, which is to endanger your soul's soul with the flames of hell. You don't want to do that, so you don't think about critical things. Um, so uh, over the years, I mean, it took a long time, uh, but the number of mental flaming hoops that I had to jump through was absolutely fucking unbelievable. Uh, and I, there, there came a time that I was able to spend a little bit of time away from my home state. I got away from my church and it, for a business trip, and I was gone for a few months. So I wasn't getting my weekly dose of propaganda. And at this point, and this was like, oh, three years ago, maybe give or take three years ago um by then I, I already i hated going to church but i thought that my problem was a problem with modern day christianity i told myself that i didn't have a problem with the bible itself or the true historical christianity i had a problem with um 
with you know just modern day Christianity, what Christianity had become. And after being able to spend a few months by myself, able to move away from the weekly propaganda, and I was able just to get away from the whole church scene, I was finally able to spend some time thinking to myself. I had, uh, there, I didn't have any of my family or friends with me. It was just me for a few months. Um, and it gave me a lot of time to think. And I finally sat down and I had to ask myself, do I really only have a problem with uh, modern day Christianity or do I have a problem with the text itself? And after thinking through, like I had a mental list of things that always bugged me. Because I, at one point I stopped trying to be scared of thinking thoughts, right? I was scared to think thoughts. Because like I said, thinking thoughts, doubting, could lead to your eternal doom, right? So I eventually I became not scared to think thoughts and I started, I had a mental list of all the, of the contradictions and <clears throat> the logical and moral repugnant things that I found in the Bible. And I started thinking through these lists and I came to the conclusion that there was many of them that it just, just there was no answers to. And it was really actually quite scary because I started, I, was, I really wanted to believe. I really wanted to find justifications for these things. I tried to tell myself, I, you know, I had mental arguments with myself or whatever. Um, telling myself, you know, going through all the hoops, jumping through all the mental hoops, thinking everything out, step by step. And eventually I ran out of like, it, it was like an acrobat who was like looking for his next move. And eventually I, I tried to make the next mental leap from 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 rope to rope or from swing to swing and the next swing wasn't there it's the only way i can explain it was i completely ran out of mental loops mental jumps to, to, to jump through you know the mental gymnastics that i had to do I, there was nothing there and i fell through and it was a terrible feeling because i knew i knew it deep in my soul i knew that i just did not believe anymore and i could not believe and there wasn't a choice it wasn't like I sat down one day and I said, I'm not going to believe in this. I really tried to believe in it. You understand? But it, it just it just wasn't even an option anymore. And I, it, there was a moment where I just stood there and I, it occurred to me that I did not believe and I could not believe. And it was terrifying. The ramifications were terrifying. Um, because... Uh, you know, uh, now all, all my family and friends were Christians. My wife was a Christian. My children... You know, I mean, can you really say that children have religion, per se? Uh, all my family and all my friends, I was plugged in to the ultra conservative Christian social sphere. And I had to leave, I had to walk away from all of that. I had to walk away from everyone I knew. And, and they would all be, I knew at that very moment that they'd all be terrified. Right? I mean, they would terrify, maybe not the right word, but they would all, like, they would have, like, a, it would bother them a lot. And not just, like, in a trying to control you, like, this really bothers me. I'm disappointed in you type of thing. But, like, it, I knew it would genuinely bother them. Um, but it was too late. Like, it was, like, like I said, it wasn't even a choice. The choice was made for me. I ran out of mental options. Um, and, but I did it anyways. It took me about two months. After I got back to where I live, it took me about two months to find the balls to announce to everybody that I wasn't a Christian anymore. And it was terrible. Now this is probably not the testimony that you want to give. Like, I would love to give you the testimony that I became not a Christian. Uh, and my life became easier, right? Kind of like the Christian testimony example I gave earlier. Uh, you know, you know, you want to give a story where, where you say, this is completely worth it. Well, it is worth it, but it's gonna be the damn hardest thing you've ever did in your entire life. To date, it was the hardest decision I ever made. To date, I've never felt worse inside. And when I told everybody, the amount of stress that was on me, and like I felt like my chest was going to like concave in on itself. Like it's the most stressed I've ever been through in my entire life. That's probably not what you want to hear, but that's the reality and you need to know that. But I will tell you, you have, you have to fucking do it. Because Christianity is not true. It's all complete bullshit. Um, and it's, it's not safe. It's, it's, it's not good for you. Not only, it's, it's not good for you for two, for two reasons. It makes you feel like shit, right? It, it, it emphasizes self-loathing, right? You're supposed to believe that you are a terrible, worthless piece of shit and you do not deserve God. But God is so great, he gives you the opportunity to, to praise him for, a not, for a, all of eternity. And you're going to praise him for all of eternity while all your family and all your friends are all forever burning in hell. Right, so you're gonna praise him while he burns your family and friends forever. Awesome. Like, it's logically repugnant, it's morally repugnant, it's just 
not good for you. And it, it makes you feel bad for existing. Um, you shouldn't ever feel bad for existing. Like you didn't like, you're not a terrible person. You're, you're an average person, hopefully. Uh, you know, like it's across the board. You need to leave. Now, if, if you haven't thought about these things before, if you're like a Christian and you're a devout Christian, don't just, don't, don't, don't just take my word for it in the words of reading Rainbow. Uh, research these things for yourself. Is there contradictions in the Bible? Is it morally or logically repugnant? Is there things that's been bothering you forever? Because because back when I, when I noticed contradictions in the Bible and I would sit there in church, I would ask myself, does anyone else notice this? Am I the only one that notices this? I assure you not. There must be other people. You have to completely turn off your brain in church, which granted a lot of people do, um, in order to in order to not notice all these things. Uh, think it through. And if you think it through long enough and you do enough research, I bet you it'll be the opposite of the case for Christ. It'll be the case against Christ. And you'll come to the same conclusion that I did. Maybe not. I don't know. But I think you will. And if you do come to that point, do whatever it takes. It'll be the hardest decision of your entire life. It'll be so damn hard, but it'll be completely worth it. And eventually, eventually, it will it'll be worth it it will reap benefits. Now, things might be awkward with your family and your friends forever. You're gonna leave your entire church, everyone that you know. You're just gonna completely pull yourself out of your entire social structure and you'll have no support whatsoever. But you have to do it. Because um, eventually, I mean, I tell you, the amount of, of mental contradictions that you have to believe in order to believe Christianity, the amount of mental loops that you have to go through in order to believe in Christianity and the Bible, it's not good for you. Like, it's like programming errors in your brain. Like, your brain is very, even as a Christian right now, if you're an ultra-conservative Christian, you still have critical thinking skills in everything except for Christianity. Right? It'd be like if somebody taught you as a child that two plus two equals five. And every time you question it, your mother and your father, they just give you like this super dirty, like evil look. Like you can't bring that up. You cannot, of course, two plus two equals five. Right? Um, eventually, you know, if you became scared enough to, to bring up that subject or think about that subject, uh, you would enter this programming error, this logic error into your brain. So if you're a Christian right now, you are needlessly self-loathing yourself. You're a good person. You're a good person. You're okay. You're not a piece of shit. You understand me? You're, you're, you're okay. You're average and average is good, right? You know, don't hate yourself. Don't hate yourself every day. That's what Christianity causes you to do. It teaches you that you're a piece of shit and it teaches you logic and moral contradictions. Believe me, just think about these things. I believe that you will see that it's true. So if you're thinking about leaving Christianity, grow the balls, absolutely do it, and bring everyone with you. Like don't pussyfoot around it, right? Don't be like, well, I don't wanna, I don't wanna stray other people. No, no motherfucker. These people have been brainwashed their entire life and they run indoctrination centers where they indoctrinate children. Before children, had before children have any critical thinking skills whatsoever, they have, they're, they're just saying, this is true. This is true. Absolutely, unquestionably true. Right? If they can indoctrinate children with threats of internal torment away from their family and friends, then you can, they can be bothered to listen to you. They can be bothered to, to hear the opposite view. If they can teach children that Christianity is true, then they as adults can hear that Christianity is not true. So bring everyone with you. Don't go quietly into that night, okay? So yeah, this is my video. I thought I would just make it because why not? All right, this is T, signing out.